Hello everyone and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide. Now a few days ago here on the channel we posted a video talking all about Universal Studios Great Britain and how Universal destinations and experiences want to bring a new theme park and resort here to the United Kingdom and more particular here in Bedford and that's actually where we are today. Now I mentioned in that video how they're actually going to be holding two public consultations about the proposed project. One of those is being held today at the Kimberley Sixth Form College which you can see just behind me here in Stuart B. We're a couple of miles away from where the actual site is where they are proposing to build this new theme park and resort and as much as it did say on the website that they're not really going to be revealing more information here today I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to come down here and um, see all the plans kind of printed out on the big boards see them in more detail and most importantly actually meet some of the people from Universal behind this project. They are in here today and it's going to be really nice to just kind of chat with them talk about what they're hoping to build and uh, also uh, I believe there's going to be a little bit of a talk that they're doing as well uh, about the proposed project. Now as I've said in these videos so far about Universal Studios Great Britain um, it's by all means not confirmed to be happening yet however the fact we've got to this stage it was five months ago when we first heard of this project and the fact we're already at this stage they're doing public consultations the land has been purchased just a couple of miles from where I'm standing now and things are moving forward very positively. So uh, come and join us here on Theme Park Worldwide. Let's go make our way inside and uh, hear what Universal have got to say themselves about building a new theme park and resort right here in Bedford. Now as soon as we arrived near the college where the exhibition was taking place there was lots of clear directional signage about where to go including the Universal logo on these flags. We waited about five minutes to get into the exhibition itself and when we made our way inside there were lots of representatives all around the room from Universal that you could chat with and also they would answer any of your questions. Along with that there were also these different boards all the way around the room with lots of information about this potential theme park and resort project that Universal want to build. All this information you can find on the Universal UK website and also we did cover that in a video on the channel just a few days ago so make sure you check it out if you haven't already seen it. It was really good though just to see all of the plans uh, on all of these big boards around the room. What was really exciting was that we actually got to hear from two representatives from Universal Destinations and Experiences and I'm going to put that footage in for you now so you can see the full presentation. All right. Uh, well, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for coming here. We really uh, appreciate it. My name is Paige Thompson. I'm president of New Ventures for Universal Parks and Resorts. So our old name, actually Universal Destinations Experiences. That's what we're known as now. But anyway, I'm uh, happy to be here today. And my name is John McReynolds. I'm the head of external affairs for Universal Destinations and Experiences around the globe. Um, my role for the company is I deal with uh, and work with communities such as yourself and all government and regulatory bodies like I said around the globe as we consider these projects. And I do want to start out by saying as excited as we are to be here working with you all and talking with you all, we're in the due diligence phase right now. We've not officially hit a go, no go, but we needed this interaction with you to hear your feedback and to hear everything you have to give us the uh, a better chance to have a phenomenal project here in Bedford. Yeah, we're really happy to be here today at Kimberley College and uh, we'll be at Bedford College on Tuesday. And we picked these venues deliberately because we really want to work with the colleges, the universities and the schools in the area to create training programs for the students, to create job opportunities for people, and that's why we're here today. Okay, so we're in the at start of a public engagement period and we'd really like to get your thoughts on what you think we should do with this project, especially as it involves the local history uh, and how we can uh, uh, use that in our park. And uh, we'd love to get your comments by May 3rd. And the reason for that is because we need to give a presentation to the government on this project. We'd love to incorporate feedback from people in Bedford as well. All right, how many people here have been to a Universal Resort? Okay, I'm all, that's great. Thank you for your business. I'm, I'm always amazed. All day long we've been asking this question, and it's a lot of people. Um, and I think that just shows that uh, people in the United Kingdom love our product, which is one of the reasons why we're interested in coming to this market. Uh, so th those of you who have been to the Reed Parks will recognize some of the things in the video I'm about to show. But the point I want to make really here is that 
our parks provide an immersive experience, which is different from a lot of other theme parks in the industry. When you're in the Jurassic World land, you're immersed in that land. You feel like you're a character in the film or in one of the books. And that's uh, really unique. Everything in the land is themed to Jurassic World. The rides, the retail experiences, the food, everything like that. You feel like you're in the world that John Hammond created. So we're going to play you a video in just a few seconds, and this will show you some of the highlights of what it's like to visit Universal. So one of the big questions I've been asked uh, today is uh, why the UK and why uh, Bedford? John will talk about Bedford in a second, but you can see on this map here, we have theme parks all around the world. We have more than 60 million people who visit our parks every year. Uh, parks in the United States, in uh, Japan, in uh, China, and in Singapore. But we don't have anything in Europe today. And the reason we're interested in the UK specifically is because of the large population that exists here, the large number of tourists, tourists that come. As I said before, uh, we uh, know people like our product here, and we also uh, have a really vibrant creative community in the UK that we're eager to tap into. Uh, so for all those reasons, it makes a lot of sense for us to come here. I get the easy question. <laughs> Why Bedford? Here's the answer, why not? The fact is Bedford is probably, and I think we believe, is the most connected town in this country. Within two hours, over 50% of this country can get here. The amazing infrastructure that's in place and the amazing infrastructure, if we push go, that will be facilitated as part of this project. Within an hour, 40 minutes, you can be almost anywhere, okay? And now think about this, in the mornings, who's recently gone to down, uh, down to London in the morning on the train? Me. Pretty full, right? Mm -hmm. Now that same train, is it coming back full? Sorry. In the morning? It's empty. I want to fill every one of those seats. We are counter to the flow of your local transportation. We use the capacity that exists and we'll augment it with the other issues we're facilitating. That means we won't have the impact many people believe in a community. We're actually the perfect industry to bring in because as you're going out, our guests are coming in and vice versa. We use that capacity that exists in the system and we'll continue to do so. So we're excited about things like a Wixom station, an east-west rail from uh, Oxford over to Bedford especially, and then more importantly, the slip lanes coming off of the 421 we're working with the National Highways on. Understand that we, do, we uh, do, uh, rely on repeat visitation. That repeat visitation, if I blow up the local transportation network, they're not coming back. So it's in our best interest to make sure that we do a flawless execution of the local transportation network. We're excited because of that opportunity here. We're excited that Luton Airport has expanded and what they're doing. So honestly, we look forward to being a great partner with this community to finish the grid of this whole area. Yeah, the other reason that the site is great for us is because it's all flat. It's really a lot easier to build on flat land. Uh, it's a farm, a farm now and also the old brickworks there. 
uh, and it's large enough for us to realize our ambitions. We have 476 acres that we've bought so far. We have some options on some additional land. So we've got enough space to build a really amazing resort there. And the, the final thing is that the land was already slated in the town plan to be developed. So it's not green belt land that wasn't gonna be developed by somebody. And we think our use of the land is really optimal. And then the last reason, probably the most important one, is because of the incredible reaction that we've gotten here from the people in Bedford. From the very first day when we first came here and told them we were interested in potentially building a theme park here, uh, the support that we've gotten from everybody has just been absolutely amazing. And in fact, of all the projects that we've worked on in the last decade or more, uh, this is the most positive support we've ever gotten from a community. And that means a lot because when the central government asks us about the project, the first question they actually ask is, does it have the support of the local people? Um, so very, very positive. And one other factor about this site is the water management of the, the area. One, the site has a wonderful history, being one of the bricks works in this community. We want to celebrate that history. But on the ecology of the site, the ecological nature of it and the water, stormwater flows, most developers worry about water. We celebrate it. We make it a part of who and what we are. We create a resort with it. We don't run from it. And I liken it to this. In Orlando right now, we're building Epic Universe. And Epic Universe, right next to it, we have built uplands and wetlands and recreated habitat next to a thing called Shingle Creek. Anybody in here know what Shingle Creek is? It's the headwaters of the Everglades. And if we could do that next to the headwaters of the Everglades, we can do something special next to your county park to celebrate that water feature and really do something special for this community. Okay, the last thing we're going to cover are some of the benefits of this project if we decide to go forward uh, for the Bedford area. And the first one is jobs. Um, during the construction period, based on our past history and other resorts we've built, we estimate we're going to create 20,000 jobs with a peak on site of 5,000 jobs at any time. And then once we open for business, we're going to have 8,000 ongoing jobs rising over time to more like 10,000. For, we've learned historically that for every job we create with our direct employment, we create another 1.5 jobs in the community for people who are supplying us with various different services and products. So I think it's a tremendous job opportunity for the Bedford area. And we always like to say, you've heard this story before, Mayor, but we always like to say, and it's true, that we don't just create jobs, we create careers. Um, it's very, very possible to join our company in an entry-level hourly job and rise to a senior management position. So as evidence of that, 50% of our management team at the University of Orlando Resort started as hourly employees with us. And Karen Irwin, who's the president and runs the entire resort, started running one cart when she graduated from university. So at every level of our company, we have training programs and we really work hard to help people advance the next level of their career. So what gets us excited? What gets us excited about coming into a community and becoming a part of it? We're not coming in and building four walls and then we disappear. If we push go and move ahead with this project, we're thinking about what the next 100 years are like. Our workers will be a tremendous part of this community and it all starts with our staff and our workers. We have a saying, team member satisfaction, TSAT, equals guest satisfaction, GSAT equals a fair and equitable return. It starts with the workforce. If they're not happy with their personal lives, they can't create that world-class experience that we want to deliver each and every day. So we want to invest in the community, we want to invest in our team members, and it's why in Orlando alone this year, last year, our staff gave 60,000 volunteer hours to charity and other community interests. Bottom line is, we want to be a part of this community for a long, long time. All right, so that concludes our presentation. Uh, please help yourself to a tea, a coffee, chocolate toothpaste, whatever you like. And uh, there are lots of universal people all around the room. Uh, we had such a big turnout. I'm not quite sure we have enough people, but there are, are lots of universal people here. And uh, they'd be happy to answer your questions as we continue to evaluate the feasibility of the project. So thank you very much for coming out today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, how about that? You've just heard from two of the representatives from Universal Destinations and Experiences about this potential new theme park and resorts here in Bedford. And we just thought whilst we're down here, we may as well have another look at the site. So throughout this clip, we'll put in some more drone shots that we've just took of the site. And we're actually standing right now, where in a few years time could be a hive of activity building this new theme park and resort, Universal Studios Great Britain. This is just such an exciting time. Like we just cannot wait. And I really hope that this project does go ahead. The great thing is that Universal are really committed to this they for are. the long term. Um, not just to building this theme park and resort, but the local area, the jobs, not just during construction, but also of course, when the theme park and resort is operating. And it's so much more than just a theme park. It's a destination and it's clear they've got the passion, they've got the know-how to create something really special right here on this piece of land and who'd have thought even last time we were down here a few months ago walking around and we got the initial drone footage and um, we didn't know the zoning kind of plan for this round here and um, we just knew the purchase the land uh, we didn't know exactly where they were going to be building the theme park and the car parks and hotels and potential second gates whereas right now we can say where we're standing will be the theme park section of this and as you can see from the drone footage this is a large plot of land uh, like I said in a previous video you can fit numerous theme parks uh, on all the land that they've purchased here definitely a second gate in the future um, but also the city walk aspect the hotels the whole kind of infrastructure of the resorts but what is clear from that uh, little consultation that was happening there today is that they're so passionate about the local area as well wasn't it yeah it is like we had a discussion with quite a lot of people and they are very focused on bringing jobs to the local area bringing tourism bringing investment into it it's like we went to the college and they said that they'd bring like the college into it and yeah. like build people up for jobs. They're very much thinking about the environment, the local area. It's not just a case of, we're gonna build this big theme park, we're gonna put it on this land. They're thinking about everything that comes with it and the impact on the local area. It just sounded so positive. And that's the thing for me, and that's why I believe so much in this project, the fact we're not seeing all fancy concepts yeah. for rides and things yet. Of course, that's gonna come if they go ahead with this project, but it's the infrastructure, it's the roads, it's the train stations. They've already said, you know, how much the population lives within two hours of this site and also the fact you know they're going to build a brand new train station over there move the existing train station on this side new uh, exit roads coming in um, off the a421 uh, honestly this is such an exciting project and uh, yeah we've even got some more updates that are happening down here on the ground as much as it's not officially confirmed yet that they are definitely going ahead with this project there's a lot of markers and things here on the ground so let's have a little look and see what we can see so let's just put this into perspective. If I bring up the site plan for the theme park area at the moment, uh, you can see just there the large plot of land that is marked for the theme park area. Well, this is it right here. I'm here. Hey, there's Charlotte. Now we're not actually standing on the edge of the site. It might look like it with the tree line over here, um, but we're not. Of course, this tree line would be removed. Uh, there'd be a lot of new landscaping and trees that would be planted as part of the project. Um, yeah, the theme park space spans behind the back just over there. And the kind of boundary to the theme park would be along the tree line just there and of course you've got the existing road which is just behind there and in the plans you can see how that would have a lot of infrastructure upgrades as well now this is what's really exciting i do apologize about the wind noise very windy day today but look at this all these little markers have already started to appear around the site just here as well probably testing the land and uh, working out all that kind of stuff because they were very clear that this is a great plot of land because of how flat it is and you can see that all the way across now um, the existing railway line is just over there in fact there's the train going past <laughs> imagine that you might be able to jump on that train and come down into universal wow honestly this is just ridiculous like in a great way um, so the existing train stations down that way there's the train line and so uh, yeah they'll be looking at relocating the station from there somewhere down to the bottom here and that's also where you'd have the main entrance to the theme park it would be over in that direction somewhere uh, and also as well from that side that's where you'd also be looking at the city walk complex possibly a hotel maybe above the entrance like i said in the video we could be seeing this park very similar uh, potentially to universal studios beijing in china uh, that owned a few years ago with a hotel over the entrance that could possibly be built over there uh, the new train station down that way somewhere and they'll certainly need more than two carriages on there I know that um, if this potential theme park and resort goes ahead and then the car parks we're looking all the way down there at the bottom for the main car park itself it's a huge plot of land uh, with the drone footage here I've got some uh, shots a little bit lower down as well so you can just appreciate um, you know how flat 
this piece of land is just here as well. But it's a beautiful area. The fact that Universal is so committed to this project and making it a nice, inviting place for everyone visiting the theme park, but also for the people that are going to be living near to this complex as well, um, is a big thing. And anyone that's been to the Universal parks around the world, and I'm sure there's people watching this video now that live locally and might be a little bit concerned and thinking, you know, is it all just talk? Um, you know, do they really think of the environment and all that kind of stuff? They certainly do. I mean, you've only got to look at their existing properties around the world. It's so much more than the theme park. It's the resort, it's the landscaping. There was a big focus actually in that talk on the kind of um, water treatment and they even mentioned, you know, about uh, uh, that in there, which goes to show the plan on putting rivers and lakes and making it a natural Actually beautiful space to be in. So what was really nice is the team at Universal who was there was chatting to the local residents and people were saying how it, how's it going to affect me, how's it going to affect the road and there was proper putting people's minds at ease saying look this is what's going to happen, we're going to be doing this, we're going to try and make this not as destructive as possible and people was really at ease with that and felt a bit better about it. There was a lot of positivity the walls, in the room and whilst we were there I'd say there was three four hundred people came through you know in the hour or so we were there like. I was having a good chat with people who actually live in the area and they're all yeah. so up for it they just want Bedford to be booming because at the moment it hasn't yeah. really got much to offer yeah and that's great you know it's all about the the kind of impact the local local area and of course making this world-class resort but there's a lot of markers you can see some just over there I'm not going to point them all out across the whole site we'll be here for uh, many days because it's a massive site but still where we're standing now we'll be right at the back um, of the theme park base on that plan with the entrance being over in that direction um, way down there to the left this would be the back possibly now we could be standing in a show building for an attraction we could be in a back of house area you know but it's clear that the boundary um, this kind of tree line here I'd probably expect to stay to be honest because I've already got some existing tree line and they'll probably plant even more and um, grow that up as well but uh, what I also found very fascinating was how they were saying you know plans for this site before um, it's not green belt land or anything like that it wouldn't be staying like this There's potentially more warehouses and things would be getting built on here and I think we all know what we'd rather have um, than a warehouse themed rides themed experiences and most importantly jobs for the local area and of course, as it stands at the moment, you can come down here and have a walk through what will be, hopefully, Universal Studios Great Britain, all developed on this side of the road just here. And you can even see a little marker just down here as well. Honestly, this is so exciting. It really is. And yeah, if you're popping down here, you know, you can walk right through. There's a public footpath through the site. How long it's going to remain like that, I'm not too sure. But uh, in terms of a time frame, we'll come on to that in a moment because there was a lot of dates and things being uh, kind of passed around in that room today. So this is the existing road that will actually be staying according to the plans, but it does say they'll make it bigger and of course a lot more attractive around here. A lot of planting and that sort of thing that will all be added around this area. And then you can see since our last visit over on this side of the site already some more fencing's gone up, private property, no trespassing, all on this side, mainly because there's some existing buildings over here and they don't want people uh, going over there and getting injured and that sort of thing. Uh, this is a huge site um, on this side as well. Initially, this is marked down as an area for the construction vehicles, um, for storing materials during the construction. And then in the long term, this could be a second gate. It could be more hotels. It could be a water park even. I mean, these are just ideas I'm throwing out there, but uh, it is clear that in the long term they'll most likely do something with this site but initially we're not going to be seeing anything built over here it will be an area for storing things and if you've been following the construction of uh, Epic Universe out in Florida you'll know they've got huge staging areas where they build things up transport them into the site when it's needed that's what this will become over on this side just here um, so yeah don't expect to see um, anything really built on this side for quite some time the big focus is all there on the left hand side for Universal Studios Great Britain Honestly, this is so exciting. And here we are then back in the car after a really exciting few hours. Firstly, going to the public consultation for this project. Lovely to meet some of the team from Universal behind it and just chatting with them and uh, the interactions between all the locals. Like, it was really nice, wasn't it? Yeah, like, we had a chat with so many people and so many people were saying like, we really want this to happen. And it was nice to have a community where people were talking about something that's just so exciting that's going to happen in the future. Fingers crossed. There was also a lot of people that had never actually been to a Universal property before. Uh, so we were talking with them about it. 
there and yeah they were quite intrigued actually speaking with someone who'd been to the one and uh, they found that really fascinating so I really enjoyed that aspect to it as well just meeting a lot of the locals and yeah it was lovely a really nice atmosphere and the town mayor was down there as well um, from the local area so that was really good and he was just kind of standing at the side giving his big thumbs up for <laughs> approval there's so much excitement for this project and just sat here right now right in the middle of the land owned by Universal in our country here in the UK I never thought we'd be seeing something like this if you'd have said to me last year Sean you're going to be sat uh, right next to some land owned by Universal here in the UK and I said you're joking like we're not going to get something like that um, yeah but here we are and I just, I just can't believe it Charlotte like, I know we are hoping so much that this happens I mean there's still quite a bit to go yes. but if this does happen this is just going to bring so much to this area so many jobs so many opportunities so we really hope this does happen definitely now in terms of dates when we can all start getting really excited when we're going to hear more now this consultation there's another one in a few days on Tuesday that's taking place then you can kind of submit your feedback um, on the website or at one of those now what I definitely recommend doing head over to the official website for Universal UK and uh, I'll put a link down below in the video description fill out the form fill out the feedback form and share your thoughts on it of course if you're as passionate and positive as we are uh, get it filled in on there uh, because even if you don't live locally like ourselves you know we're 90 minutes from here fill in the form it shows you positivity and uh, the team really do appreciate that from speaking to them today so get that form filled in in terms of other dates um, there's, these are just rumoured now uh, there's been a lot of rumblings and talks today about potential a decision being made in a few months or before the end of the year again these are just rumours um, with a initial start in construction possibly next year in 2025 ready for a 2030 opening here um, in Bedford which is well six years away that is just ridiculous like it's so exciting uh, and we could be seeing construction you know from the end of next year more groundwork you can already see it on the ground there's yeah. markers about if, if this doesn't go ahead now not only would I be incredibly disappointed <laughs> uh, but also um, you know I think um, I'd just be really surprised like, I think it's going to happen Charlotte I, I really do I really hope so like this is such a huge opportunity for it the is. UK to have a universal so close to us and we love universal yeah. and for other people who might not get the opportunity to travel to a yeah. different universal in another country to have one in the UK that people can travel to and also people from other countries to travel to Universal in the UK would be amazing. It's not just a normal theme park resort having something like Universal. The amount of tourism, you think how many of us Brits exactly. travel to Orlando every year and we'll still keep doing that but having one on our doorstep uh, as well going to all the time and then traveling out to the others, oh honestly it just gets me so pumped, so excited. As always thanks for watching Theme Park Thank Worldwide. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates. Any little bit of news we'll be covering it here. We've now also got a playlist here on the channel with all the videos about this project and of course if it gets the green light um, and the construction starts we'll be down here a lot covering this project i thought nemesis was a great one to follow over two years six years worth of construction updates coming up here on theme park worldwide if it opens in 2030 i'll be like 37 when oh, we're no. stepping in but uh, <laughs> you know what uh, i am so grateful for it what an opportunity uh, thanks for watching theme park worldwide and that leaves us with one final thing to say get, get out there and keep on riding bye-bye